And a good Thursday morning, Birds fans. Appreciate you streaming on in here on Birds 365. You got Mac and Mac, McMullen and McDonald hanging with you for the next couple hours. Want to thank our buddy, New Jersey Fishing Maniac on the stream for jumping in and reminding everybody, hit that like button. That's always a good way to start the show. Go ahead. Give us some love. Uh, hit the like button as you stream in here early. All right. See, uh, you're making the uh, request now, probably not a smart thing because we only got about 40 people checking in and we hope to have upwards of 400 later on. So we might repeat that request a little bit <laughs> later, but thanks to New Jersey fishing maniac for thinking of us. Yeah. Uh, a little, little, little uh, negative this week. A little, uh, people are a little down uh, eight and oh to eight and one. I'm a little surprised. No, you know, everyone is. No, I, I am a little surprised. I'm, I'm surprised how quickly people have gone from, I can, not everybody, obviously, but there's a lot of people that have gone from, um, you know, I can't see a loss on the impending schedule to I can't see a win on it. I don't know how you do that so quickly. That's some whiplash right yeah, there. A li li little bit. And uh, in defense of those individuals, and I am not one of them, but I'll try and defend them here, play devil's advocate for a second. Not just the loss, but the loss of Dallas Goddard added to that yeah, the injuries to me are a far bigger deal than the actual loss. right and uh, and you can game. certainly say people are uh, acknowledging and feeling the pinch of those injuries and it's legit because when we left the air yesterday johnny mac 22 hours ago uh we did not know if dallas goddard was even going to go on the injured reserve list maybe yeah. it was only going to be a couple of weeks oh no Four at a minimum, and it could be longer than that. We we won't know until we get a little further down the road because we know the uh, Eagles are like the Secret Service in uh, keeping injury information to themselves, getting that competitive advantage. Uh, and Nick Sirianni talked about it at length yesterday. We don't know when Dallas Goddard's coming back. Yeah. Um, you're right about the Eagles now, I you know, Behind the scenes, I've heard AC joint injury, and that uh, typically can be a, a two, two to four week injury on, on the lesser uh, part of the scale if it's not as serious, four to six weeks if it's more serious. So what it would indicate, obviously, by he's going to miss four games, it would indicate the more serious part of it. So if you figure six weeks as the ceiling, um, Still not the worst thing in the world. Not good by any stretch of the imagination, but you got to persevere. We talked about it a lot. This is a player you can't replace, and Nick Sirianni talked about it after the show. I mean, you don't just insert somebody and say, do what Dallas Goddard does. So, you know, it's got to be a combination of Jack Stoll and Grant Calcaterra, maybe Tyree Jackson, maybe Noah Tungiai at some point. But, yeah, I mean – it, more than that, it's got to be a, a change to more Quez Watkins and more Zach Pascal, I think, than, you know, the tight end screens. You can pretty much wipe them out. Maybe you can throw one to Calcaterra every once in a while, try to surprise somebody. But it's not going to be a staple any longer of your offensive play calling. Certainly shouldn't be. Um, and we'll see how they handle it. Um, they've been very good offensively, adjusting. Um uh, over the past two seasons since Nick has gotten here. Uh, but this is a big one, no doubt about it. That is a that is a they, that is a big injury. And back when they were eight, no, I remember saying that week, injuries are the one thing that can up you know, they can destroy anybody's season. And that's that's a big one. Acknowledged as per Nick Sirianni yesterday, and I believe him, and I think he's telling you the hundred percent truth, uh, that there is no one individual that's going to replace Dallas Goddard. It, it takes a village to replace Dallas Goddard. We all uh, understand that and agree on that. But if there's one guy who's going to be asked to do the most with help, because it's not going to be one guy, but if you were to stack them in order of those who are going to uh, be tasked to do Dallas Goddard-like things, who do you think that number one guy is? Jack Stoll. Absolutely um, right. Yeah, Jack's the backup tight end. Jack is, you know, he's going to play the most. Uh, you know, Nick mentioned that Jalen trusts him. Uh, he's a smart player. He's in the right spots. That's, you know, a lot of what you want from backup players is just don't make egregious mistakes. And, you know, 
just do the things you're supposed to do. And Jack Stoll um, played a lot to begin with. He, you know, he plays a lot. So um, we don't know uh, much about Grant Calcaterra at this stage. Uh, they like his ceiling as a pass catcher. He's not a very good blocker. We understand that. Hasn't played much. Tyree Jackson, we haven't seen in a calendar year. And I think people forget he was a quarterback making the transition to tight end. He's not. It's not like he's been playing tight end for his entire life. Um, so, you know, he's another outlier. He's got tremendous athleticism, um, and you hope he can develop. But you can't just say, oh, Tyree's back from a calendar year of, of not practicing. He's going to be a difference maker. I mean, that's pie in the sky, as they say, Jody. So... Jack Stoll is going to be the guy. He's going to be the guy in 11 personnel that's the tight end. Um, and they're probably going to play less 12 and 13 than they have um, because they lost a really good player. And their better players, their better backup players are receivers. So it stands to reason you go heavier with the receivers. Here's the reason why I think it's going to be Jack Stoll above and beyond everything else. And you just gave us, <coughs> excuse me, four or five great reasons why. Here's the number one in my mind. I think the Eagles may actually revert a little bit to the 2021 Eagles, which you'll remember got off to a two and five start. And the coaching staff came together and said, listen, we got to get the season turned around and what do we do best. We run behind our offensive line, and they became a running team, a run-dominant team. A big part of that last year and Eagles' success running the football this year is Dallas Goddard. Because this side of uh, Kittle in San Francisco, he might be the best blocking tight end in football. He is a monster when it comes to adding to the offensive line in run blocking. He, uh, he has had some plays this year where I've – I, I, I watch every Eagle game and I, I record it. And I uh, take notes and write down times, circle big plays. Dallas Goddard blocks have been plays that I've circled several times. during, And you just don't think of, ooh, tight end with a big block. Oh, Dallas Goddard does that. And Jack Stoll, at least uh, as per ratings and what we all believe, not breaking down game film like the coaches do, he is far and away their best blocking tight end. So I, I, I think who's going to replace Dallas Goddard catching the football? Nobody. Uh, I don't know that they have that guy. Don't expect Tyree Jackson or Calcaterra or Jack Stoll to come <clears> in here <throat> and have a 75-yard game. I don't believe that's going to happen. So the thing they're probably worried about most losing Dallas Goddard is what he adds and brings to the running game. I think without Goddard, they may try and run it a little bit more than they have up to this point this year. And the guy who probably helped them do that the most is Jack Stahl. Yeah, no, I, and he's, you know, the most ready to play, the one who does play, the most experienced. And I, I, I think that was notable that uh, Nick said uh, the quarterback trusts him because as a receiver, the receiving part of the game, uh, the worst thing you can do is, is fool the quarterback. So if the quarterback trusts you, that's a big deal. Um and, yeah, he's by far the best blocker they have at tight end. I mean, Grant Calcaterra is is not known for his blocking, and Tyree Jackson wasn't even a tight end. So blocking isn't um, his forte, and Jack was brought in to be a blocking tight end. Um, my biggest – I think the biggest thing they'll miss about Dallas Goddard, the skill set's obvious. I mean, there's only, you know, maybe five people on the planet that can even be in the conversation with him. Uh, that first skill set at tight end, but so that's that part's obvious. What he brings to the offense is an unpredictability because normally, when other offenses are in 11, they're going to throw the ball, uh, you know, that's that's what they want to do. Uh, but the Eagles, because of Dallas's blocking ability, they can run the ball, and they're statistically they're more effective running from 11 than they are from 12 or 13, which is counterintuitive, but people think they're going to pass and all of a sudden they run sure. with the tight end and they're surprised by it. Now, when you're 12 and 13, you know, people are more alert for the run and the Eagles can pass out of those formations because the, the tight end is so good as a receiver. 
and it creates this unpredictability. You saw it when their offense was humming. A lot of that is, we always say the defense is on the heels. The defense doesn't know what's coming. They don't know what's coming because they're looking at they're looking at their keys. All right, they're going to run the football. They're going to run the football. Here they come. They throw the football and vice versa. Um, that's going to be missing without Dallas Goddard. And you could try some different things. You can trend bust, as I said, and, and they will, but it's not going to be the same because people aren't going to be threatened nearly as much um, by the other players. So now you have to root and hope that it is only a four-week injury. You know, it's going to be a minimum of four weeks because they put them on IR. It may be more than that, and it could end up being a massive injury for uh, the Eagles staff to deal with. All right. Uh, staying on the injury front, um, did you watch Marlon Tui Pelotu come off the field injured on Monday night against the Commanders? No, I didn't he, notice uh, it on television. I, you were I there at the game. Going. No, um, but I'll also note that, um, and I know where you're going, and I went there as well. Um, I said, you know, does this have more to do with trying to get Linval Joseph in here, which we'll talk about? Um, and trying to sort of stash Marlin. Uh, but I will note, I didn't know Dallas Goddard was injured. He he played through the injury. Uh, Marlin played through the injury. One thing about the NFL is that, that's changed from the days, and you and I have been around for far too long, Jody. So we remember all the way back to George Allen was famous for stashing players, stashing players, you know, they're not ready, but stash them on injury reserve, keep them around, keep them in your organization. You used to be able to do that. You can't do it as much now. Now, while I say that there's some wiggle room because everybody's banged up in the NFL. So you can, you, can, you guys play through injuries all the time. AJ Brown could go on IR tomorrow. If he, he wasn't going to play through this ankle injury, you could put him in there and legitimize it and, and, and document it. But you also have to document the stuff. And when, you know, you're trying to stash a bunch of guys on injured reserve, they will stop that. So he's hurt. How hurt? You know, could he play through it? That's the interesting part. Like, in, in other words, did their reaction, were they going to sign, and, and, and Nick Sirianni was asked this, and he said, no, we like Marlon, blah, blah, blah. Were they going to sign Linball Joseph if Marlon was healthy? That's the question. Uh, I hope to get the bottom of someday soon. Um, I think they wanted to sign Linball no matter what. Um, they claim that they like Marlon as a player, but – and and I do think they – I think there's – I don't think there's 100% either side. I do think they like Marlon as a player, but he's not in the role he should be in. So that, to me, is the biggest issue. One of the – and this is one of the very few mistakes Howie Roseman did – had while building this roster is not having a backup for Jordan Davis. And by that, I mean, same thing with Dallas Goddard. I'm not talking about having somebody who can come in and be a star. I'm saying somebody who can play that role and is comfortable in that role, a true nose tackle. Now, I don't know. Linball Joseph was a great nose tackle. I mean, that's the player, actually. Literally, the player the Eagles want Jordan Davis to become. That's how good <coughs> a nose tackle he was, but he's 34. Right. You know, Robert Quinn was a great pass rusher last year. He was a great pass rusher. Yeah. I, I see no evidence in Chicago or Philadelphia. He's still a great pass rusher. So it can happen quickly in this league. And he's 34 and he hasn't played all season. Now I think he hasn't played because he hasn't wanted to play, he wanted to be with a contender. He thinks he has an opportunity to go steal a ring as they say, I think he can still play. He's not what he once was, but he's the perfect, perfect fit if he's the old Linball Joseph for what this team wants. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, and I don't know. I don't have my finger on the pulse of the general manager whispers and wires. Guys like getting paid. And if Linval Joseph had a legitimate offer to play for somebody, I don't think he turned one down because, yeah, I don't really think they're going to be able to win. So I'm going to pass on that. And well, stay no, un- that, I stay mean, unemployed. He, he's playing, he's playing for the veteran minimum. So that's, you know, at 34, like, that's part of, in in my opinion, and this is only my opinion. I haven't talked to the guy yet. He wasn't there yesterday. You know, that's the way this league works, unfortunately, for veteran players. You know, you go from these highly paid, he's made a lot of money over his career, to, to this. And, and they say to themselves, well, I'm not paying for that. And then you say, I'm not paying for that for some crap team. Who's going to say, yeah, I'll bring you in and pay you the veteran minimum. But maybe if he can go steal a ring, that's where I think he comes into play. But yeah, if he had a legitimate three-year deal for a lot of money like he's used to making, yeah, he would have signed the contract with anybody. But that's not there for 34-year-olds in this league. That's just never going to be there. That's the way this industry works. Yeah, sorry, John. I disagree with you. Um, Veteran minimum, unemployed. Veteran minimum, unemployed. Yes, the veteran minimum doesn't jump off the page. Unemployed surely does, as in you're not getting paid anything. So if if you realize that that's what you're going to have to play for, for any of the 32 teams, nobody's offering you. Uh, when the offer comes, it's going to be the veteran minimum. Yeah. I, I, I Do you know of any other team that offered him any contract during this offseason? Uh, no, but I haven't talked to him. I'm, I guarantee you somebody offered Linval Joseph a contract because he played well enough last year. I mean, I guarantee you. I mean, I'll dig and I'll buy. I, I guarantee he had offers. I mean, there, this is, you know, this this guy played at a, a relatively high level last year, but he's old. Um, you know, people don't like paying old players in this league. I I'm surprised you disagree with that. Now, if it's not the case, as I said, and Robert Quinn is a perfect example of this. He he went from 18 and a half sacks to uh, 129 of 130 on pro football. I mean, that is kind of hard to explain. Uh, the drop off happens quickly um, in this league, and that's part of the reason why nobody want nobody's going to offer him a two year contract. Um, but I feel very comfortable saying Linval Joseph got offers. Same with Indomit and Sue. Since day one, now I know Indomit uh, and Sue has offers. He's not playing. I, I, I know Odell Beckham Jr. has offers. He's not playing. Right. I mean, there are people who make decisions for other reasons. They're not just going to come back to play, especially when they've made a ton of money over their careers. How much, how much do you believe Linval Joseph made over his career? Oh. I would suggest less than Deshaun Watson's going to make this year. Well, he's a nose tackle, Jody, against the largest country. He's made $40 million. I mean, <laughs> how much? How much? He signed two huge contracts. He signed one huge. He signed three contracts that were significant. His first one coming off his, he was a second round pick. So you make decent money in New York. Then he signed a huge deal with Minnesota. Then he was a two-time Pro Bowl selection. Then he got an extension. And then he got a good deal with uh, Los Angeles uh, uh, when he left Minnesota. This guy's made a lot of money, Jody. Okay. Now he doesn't make quarterback money, but he's made a lot of money in his well, career. Uh, it's all re- it's, it's in comparison one to the other. And, yeah, some positions are much more highly paid than others. But when you say he's made a lot of money, well, no. Deshaun Watson's made a lot of money. He's made good defensive well, tackle mean, money. His his first all right. His first contract, four years, fifty million, which he played out in Minnesota. Then he signed for five years, thirty-one million. And I think he saw three years of that. Then then he had the uh, a two-year deal for seventeen million with the Chargers. I mean, if that's not a lot of money, I don't know what a lot of money is. That's as much well, money I, as a nose tackle is going to make. Fletcher Cox has made a lot of money. Fletcher Cox has made more money playing under the same tackle. Position, yes, that is the most money a nose tackle is going to make in this league. This is the problem with people with Jordan Davis. 
and they say, well, just play Milton Williams. They play different positions. Fletcher Cox plays a different position. Fletcher Cox plays Aaron Donald's position. Aaron Donald makes more than nose tackles. For a nose tackle, Linval Joseph has made as much money as anyone in the NFL over the past decade. Anyone. Okay. But, uh, again, you, you just want to uh, keep him in that nose tackle position, which is where he plays. But uh, when you, you use a phrase like he's made a lot of money. Made a lot of money for a nose tackle. Not made a lot of money as compared to other football uh, players. I, I, and my position is I, that he's not – making this decision based on the fact that the Eagles rate and one. I think he's making this decision on the fact that the Eagles offered him a contract, whatever that contract is. Um, you don't know. I don't know. Neither one of us know, but I stand uh, top of what's going on in the league pretty well. I've heard no one say they've had interested in signing on Linville Joseph and it offered him a contract well, I don't know what at whatever say. level it is. If $80 million isn't a lot of money for a nose tackle, I don't know what to say, but I, if you're okay. telling me, if you're telling me Linval Joseph or Indomitian Sue is going to play for the Houston Texans because they get a one-year better and minimum deal, I don't agree with you. He's coming back to play with a contender. And if he didn't get an offer from a contender, he probably wouldn't be playing. And I'm not saying he can play because I don't know. He's 34 years old. But I, I, he's not taking a deal from the stinking Houston Texans. I guarantee you that. I mean, there are other, other reasons people decide to walk away from the game. We've seen people walk away at at the apex of their careers. Everybody's different, Jody. Everybody's Understood. different. And the Houston Texans, yes, uh, unless he's a, a Texas guy and he wants to just go home and it's convenient for him. There are a handful of teams that are probably going to be eliminated that he'd say, yes, not playing is better than the veteran minimum for that team. I bet you there's 20 teams he would play for that you would consider, to use your word, contenders if they had offered him a contract. More than half of the league. Well, well, that hopefully, you would consider hopefully, contenders. hopefully, we'll get to talk to him today. Hopefully, uh, he'll give us some information. Uh, but yeah, you and I are just going to disagree because this guy has made a shitload of money in his NFL career. So, I mean, he, he, I, that's just agree to disagree there. Um, and I'm not disagreeing that he's made good, he made very good money for a defensive tackle. But I, I disagree with your stance that he's coming to the Eagles because they're the Eagles, because they're eight and one. I'm saying he would have signed previously had a team, a, a non basement team, a non non contender team, a team that's in the middle of the pack of the NFL. If they had offered him a contract, I think he would have signed earlier. This is pretty late, John. Nine weeks into the season to not be on a ride. Yeah, and I, I, I firmly believe he wouldn't be playing if they weren't a good team. He wouldn't have come back. And he, and he talked to Josina Anderson, by the way, Josina, and that's the first thing he said: chance to win a Super Bowl. Um, which is an obvious answer when you join the team. Once you, once you put pen to paper, it's pretty obvious to say, yeah, I'm, I'm coming here because we've got a chance to win the Super Bowl. I think 30 out of 30 guys in this position would say the same exact thing. I, he's John McMahon. I'm Jody McDonald. We got our buddy Special Ed Kratz. He's up next. Sports Illustrated. Maven joins us here on Birds 365.